the fact that the dedication of the Lincoln Memorial was segregated is surprising to us until we actually think about the moment in history and what Washington, D.C. was like on the other side of the violence of 1919 with the country's redoubled commitment to white supremacy. Segregation was so deeply embedded that it was hard to imagine how it would be undone. 57 years after the end of the Civil War, Lincoln was still widely revered among African Americans. But over time, white Americans had crafted a very different memory of Lincoln and of the Civil War itself. By 1922, the narrative of the Civil War as a tragic break among white men in which enslaved people have no speaking role, that is firmly in place. We'll get to the point where people are saying the Civil War was never about slavery. And so Lincoln as the great emancipator is gone out of the narrative. Lincoln will be remembered in history not as having freed men from slavery, President Harding told the audience, but as having kept the Union intact. By erasing emancipation, the veneration of Lincoln could be squared with the subjugation of black Americans. The only African American speaker that afternoon was Dr. Robert Moton, the president of Tuskegee Institute. This memorial is but a hollow mockery, Moton wrote in the draft of his speech, a symbol of hypocrisy, unless we can make real in our national life the things for which he died. But Moton's draft was censored by the event's organizers. Only a bland tribute to Lincoln remained. When the ceremony was over, the U.S. Marine Band struck up My Country Tis of Thee, and the crowd began drifting away. The black press was outraged by the dedication and by the revision of history. The Chicago Defender urged African Americans to boycott the memorial. Pass the shrine by, it advised. Later on, let us dedicate that temple, thus far only opened 